Let us open our Bibles today in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. This chapter talks about the Ten Commandments, but I would like to describe this as the Ten Expressions of God's Love, which is the Everlasting Gospel. Specifically, I would like to zero in in the Tenth Commandment, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. The Holy Scripture is telling us, Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is in your neighbor's. Now this 10th commandment summarizes the expression of God's love by focusing on the inward man, what the inward person must do, rather than the external uh, qualities of a person. The inner quality of a person which is being controlled by the heart, which is also being referred to as the mind in the Bible, is very important in the Tenth Commandment. Thou shall not covet. Now you might be asking the question, what is covetousness? Covetousness is simply can be defined as being greedy. Or it can also be uh, translated as being overly selfish, having the intense desire to get what a person wants rather than uh, sharing what a person has to others. Covetousness or greed or selfishness is the exact polar opposite of the first commandment, which states, Thou shall have no other gods before me. Because the tenth commandment if we are in a covetousness mode, we are telling God that we are our own God, that we are pleasing our own appetite, our own passion, our own selfish uh, wants, and also intense desire. In another sense, the first commandment talks about that thou shalt have no other gods, meaning unequivocally, un compromisingly, we have to surrender to God. But in the 10th commandment, which is the, uh, the last of the great uh, expression of God's everlasting gospel to man, is that we are our own God if we covet. The Bible says, do not covet anything. Do not be greedy. The problem of greed has its roots in the inner heart. The heart of man which is depraved after the, the fall, after Adam and Eve's sin, we have this propensity, this proclivity to commit sin and to satisfy our own selfish desires. And the Bible is very clear, explicitly clear. Do not do it. Do not be greedy. Because all of the problems, killing, murder, stealing, adultery, being dishonest, untruthful, lying, and all the other immoral, unethical acts are summed up in this command. Covetousness. Do not be covetous. Well, what happens if we are desiring somebody else's house? Of course, we would like to have what that other neighbor has. We want to accumulate stuff in order for us to, um, should I say, compete with the Jonases. That's why this is very important, dearly beloved, because the Bible is telling us that the problem of our society, our community, or our world is because people are being greedy, covetous and has the intense desire to accumulate stuff and even somebody else's spouses or somebody else's son or daughter or somebody else's stuff in the house or even their animals or properties. 
And so, dearly beloved, because of God's great love, we are told, do not be covetous. I am your God. I will provide for you. The Bible is teaching us that money is very important because wherever our treasures or our money monies are deposited, there our hearts are also. It's, there's a clear distinction between the God of, of money and the God whom we serve. And the Bible is very clear that in order for us to show that we are not thinking of the inner selfish desires, we have to give God what God requires of us. The Bible is replete of messages or commands to, t to return the tithe or the 10% and also the offerings which God asks us if we have expressed our love to Him. A cheerful giver, the Bible says, is what God loves, is who God loves. Now, going back to the tithe, the tithe is the tenth of all our income. And that is not a coincidence why God ex expresses that 10% is His. Although everything in the world is His, He just asks us 10% as a simple token to His great expression in the tenth commandment that 10% is His. Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not be greedy. Thou shall not be selfish. This is the message of the tithe paying or tithe giving or returning our tithes in our modern world. You can uh, research in the, in the scriptures and this is what the scripture is telling us to do. Because God has a promise. If we obey Him, if we allow Him to be our God, and we return the tenth of our income, and with our love offerings, God will indeed pour out so much blessing. A blessing of hope, a blessing of peace, a blessing of joy, a blessing of love, a blessing of a good relationship, and a blessing of a longer life, happy, filled, positive life. Because God knows that we, as human beings, we can be happy without the material things. We can be happy without these other gadgets or other technological items that we always desire. We could be happy by just having a relationship with Him and also with one another. True happiness, friends, is not found in the things that we accumulate, but in the relationships that we have cherished throughout our lives. Do not covet. Think of others. Share what you have. Go find someone who is in greater need and give him what you have. I believe, friends, that the everlasting gospel in the Ten Commandments is God's expression of His love towards us sinners is indeed true to our time. There will be no unequal distribution of wealth if all of us will heed the command of God. There will be no killings or murders or adultery if we obey what God has prescribed for all of us. And so dearly beloved today, I would like to appeal to you. Remember the transcript of God's character is love. And He wants us to love others. And by doing so, we will not think of ourselves only, but we will think of what others need in order for them to serve and be loyal to God. So if this is you today, I would like to make an appeal to give up to the Lord Jesus Christ all those selfish desires, the intense passion that we have to accumulate wealth, material things in this secular world, let us give them all to Jesus and say to Him, Lord Jesus, I would like to obey You, especially the Tenth Commandment. Would you like to do this, friends? If that is you, I'd like to invite you to stand with me today 
as I would like to offer a prayer for all of us. Thank you, friend, for surrendering to the Lord your inner heart. Father in heaven, I would like to pray for my brothers and sisters who are in the valley of decision. Father in heaven, I pray for the Holy Spirit to, to have a powerful influence in their lives, that they will give their hearts to you, that they will heed, obey, keep your commands, for this is our only safeguard and our only safety and our only security in this dying world. May your spirit pervade and your spirit triumph in whatever, whatever we do, and that we will be at peace and be loving and loyal and joyful and happy because you are near us. I pray in the most loving name of Jesus. Amen.